What's up, my legion of leasers, my army of apartment maniacs? It's Matt Easton, founder of Leasing University, and it's time for student questions. We've got one from one of my favorite students, one of my favorite companies. I won't say the name of the company. We're just going to call her T-Money, Trisha. Trisha, you know who you are. You sent me this email with your own little Trisha, um, I don't know what they're calling these, cartoon version of yourself saying many thanks. I love it. It made my day. I loved your email so much. I want to answer it for you right here, right now on this video. So the super great, the amazing, the powerful, okay, tenacious Trisha, T-Money, the awesome, the awesome Trisha writes, hey Matt, I need your expert advice. I don't do what I can, Trisha. Okay, while in a lease up, it's a significant amount of inventory. So what Trisha's saying is their management company, as with any management company, has no fault of their own. It's no fault of the product. We've all got to start somewhere. And that somewhere is 0% occupancy. Every building that is built, unfortunately, there's not a general contractor that can install a renter right after they install the microwave we have to sell the renter in there, okay? So uh, while in a lease up, although there's significant inventory, how do we create a sense of urgency? Additionally, we can hold the unit a little bit longer. However, the price does increase, okay? What do you recommend to overcome the price difference uh, for a later move-in date? Let's unpack this because there's two different things here. They're both very simple when we have the right mindset, okay? Ugh. You guys are gonna laugh at me, all right? But while in a lease up, there's a significant amount of inventory. Here's what I want. Maybe use a different example. I tend to like her. I don't have a problem with her. We won't go into it, but here's the, here's the name I want you to remind your people of. Taylor Swift, okay? Every single Taylor Swift concert had what? It was in a stadium, 70,000 seats. They all sold out. To the point where nobody could even get a seat on the regular market. And some people, I won't name names, had to buy tickets for maybe not themselves and, and a daughter, I'm just not going to say anything, for like $3,000 a seat. I hear a friend told me, a friend told me it was a terrific, amazing experience and worth the 3000 I won't get into whether or not I would be so crazy to pay that much money. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about here is every Taylor Swift concert was at a point at one point where what? Zero tickets were sold, okay? What you didn't see is Taylor Swift on her social media going, oh, we're getting ready to announce a concert and I really hope that some of these tickets sell. We've got a lot of them, okay? You wanna be confident. You wanna be Taylor Swift. You wanna be cool. You wanna be calm. You wanna be collected. Everybody wants to live here. We are back to back to back to back on tours. I'd like to squeeze you in today. What time works for you? Uh, 4.30, awesome. I'm gonna slide you in at 4.30. If for some reason I'm running late, which I won't be, what's your mobile so I can text you so you're not killing yourself trying to get here? 303-803-7372, uh, awesome. Thanks so much, Matt. Along those same lines, if you're running late, which is perfectly okay, would you let me know so I'm not kind of pushing the other person out ahead of you that's, that's signing their lease up? Again, with a lease up, the excitement here is crazy. We're open in the office every day with people almost like standing outside, right? Create that Taylor Swift buzz. Let them know, okay? This is all in your mindset, how you project it. If you're like, we only have 5% of our units leased. That doesn't project a skillful, that doesn't project confidence, that doesn't project that this place is going to be fully occupied very, very quickly. That's what I want everybody to realize. Just like a Taylor Swift concert, your properties are awesome. Just like a Taylor Swift concert, people want to be there. And just like a Taylor Swift concert, if you wait, you lose, okay? now. You can't go on Airbnb and sublet the place that goes against policy violations. So you gotta be one of the first ones to lease it. You don't even need to tell any of that to your prospects. What you need to do is project confidence. This is a dynamite new project. The anticipation has been huge. The excitement in the community is huge. We are back to back on tours. When does it make sense for you to get down here today while well, we still have inventory, right? Have that excitement. Have that level of confidence. Have that level of commitment. Even when you have zero leases. Because guess what? There will come a time. Leasing consultants, not T-Money. T-Money doesn't have a problem. You do. But leasing consultants. There will come a time when that property is fully occupied. Now, if you don't have the right skill set and the right confidence, you may need to go work someplace else. Okay? I'll coach somebody that will get in there and get it full. 
It's not the property. It's how we project our confidence in the property. All right, here's the second thing that T-Money brought up. Additionally, we can hold a unit a little bit longer. Here's what Trisha is saying, and Trisha, here's what I believe you're saying if I read the email correctly. What you're saying is you can hold the unit a little bit longer because it's a lease up, you have some flexibility there, but if I push the unit, the move-in date out 30 days, they're gonna have to pay a higher rent. How do I handle that? How do I sell the rent increase? I don't want you to sell the rent increase. The rent is the rent at the time of renting. We don't have to sell anything on facts, right? The sky is blue, water is wet, and rents go up. You don't have to sell people on that. It's a fact, look it up. Things cost more money over time. So instead of selling them on the rent increase, what I want you to do is service them on doing something nice for them. Here's the way not to say that. Hey, you know, if you need to hold this, um, because we have so many units, I, I can hold it, but you're gonna have to pay a higher rent, you know, because you'd be renting it 30 days later and the rent's probably gonna be a little bit more. You'll, sorry, but you'll have to pay the rent at that time. Versus, listen, I totally get it that your move-in date is January. The fact that we're in a lease up, we can't typically do things like this because um, this property will probably be 100% occupied by January and I wanna make sure that you have an opportunity to live here, okay? I've checked with my team. I wanna do something special for you. Here's what I would like to do. I'm gonna cover the cost of holding this unit for you an extra 30 days so that the unit is there for you in January. I'm gonna tell you right now, if we don't hold it for you, very high likelihood that it won't be there. And I know that you've put a lot of time, energy, and effort into this. And I know based on everything that you're telling me with the fact that this is the right school district for your daughter and that you're gonna be able to walk to work, this is the right community for you. And I understand that you're, not, you're not capable of moving in until January. As long as you can do this, agree that you're gonna to have to pay the rent as if it was you were signing the lease in January, as if you walked through the door and we just happen to have something available in January, which we're probably not going to, light, to, to have, I will do this. I will move some things around on our budgets. I'm gonna to talk to my marketing team. We're gonna hold, we're gonna cover the cost of holding the unit for you as long as you sign the agreement right now, but you will have to start paying the rent at January rents rates, which are most likely gonna be a little bit higher as you can imagine. Does it make sense to lock this in so the apartment is there for you in January? Okay, that's a totally different discussion. Guys, you need to realize, you need to save your prospects from themselves. You also need to save yourself from them, yourself. And a lot of times we constantly, as property managers, as leasing consultants, we're what? We're magnets for negativity. Not too many people come into leasing office high-fiving us and going, I am so glad that the rent is what it is. You could charge me three times more. I just wanted to thank you, right? Nobody ever does that, right? They pay us a lot of money. People are grumpy. It happens in property management. It doesn't mean that we're not providing a lot of value. So instead of apologizing for doing something special for somebody, actually say, hey, I want you here. I understand your situation. Based on everything you're telling me, this is the perfect fit for you. I realize that you can't move in until January. I wanna be very honest, transparent, and forthright and clear with you. The likelihood that this particular unit is gonna be in available in January with the amount of tours and the amount of people that we have coming in is very, very low, okay? You can wait and come back in January and hope something is available. I don't think it will be. If it is, I'm happy to help you. If it's not, I have some sister communities that I can recommend. If we, if our entire company is completely leased up, I can probably recommend some competitors. But based on everything you're telling me, this is the right apartment for you. Yeah, yeah, this is the one I want, right? It's in the school district for my daughter and I can walk to work, absolutely. Here's what I wanna do, I wanna do something special for you. Okay, I've already talked to my team about this, I've already cleared it with them, I've already let them know your situation and the fact that you know this is the perfect situation for you, your daughter, and your ability to walk to work. What we're gonna do here as a company, we're gonna cover the cost on our end. I'm gonna pick that up. We're gonna cover the expense of having this unit sit here unoccupied until January. That's on me, I'll cover that. As long as you're okay with committing to the lease right now and committing to it at the January price, I'm okay with covering the cost of holding the unit. Does it make sense to lock this in? And if they say no, got it, what's a good next step? Well, what do you mean? What's a good next step? Well, I want this apartment, I just don't wanna pay the January rate. Do you wanna move in before January? I can't do that. 
Wherever you move, you're going to, I totally get it and I totally understand, but wherever you move, you're going to have to pay the January rate. Does it make sense to get you in here, which is going to be in the school district for your daughter and close to work so you can walk and you've got that nice balcony, right? Well, yeah, it does. Congratulations, you made a great decision. What happens next? I'll cover the paperwork for the hold on it. Um, we'll get all the application filled out. Let them know what happens next, okay? Guys, if you have any questions like this at all and you're on leasinguniversity.com, send support an email, info at leasinguniversity. I will make you guys a fan question email if I like your question, which I probably will, because if you're on Leasing University, you're awesome. If you're not on Leasing University, check us out over at leasinguniversity.com. Call us, 888-735-7451. Call us at Leasing University. Come see us at leasinguniversity.com. My name's Matt Easton. I'm the founder of Leasing University. I'm all about helping you get more done, have more fun, make more of an impact in your renter's life. If you're not on leasinguniversity.com, what are you doing? Check it out. Get your certified leasing consultant credential today, and I'll see you over at leasinguniversity.com. The way people rent apartments has changed. Today's renter has access to more information. Today's renter has more choices. The apartment industry needs you. Studies have shown that moving is the most stressful life event. The old sales training, well, it just doesn't work today. I'd like to teach you how to take the stress out of leasing apartments in a way that's meaningful to you and your renters and get you seven times more leases. I'll show you how the perfect leasing process works. I'm gonna walk you through everything from answering the phone to closing the lease. I'm gonna show you how to determine your prospects' wants and their needs so that you can build value in your apartments. You will learn how to handle any objection or complaint. I'm gonna show you how to connect with your renter so it's easy for them to rent with you. I've taught the best property management companies and thousands of people just like you how to lease apartments. Property management is complicated. I'll simplify it for you. There's more competition than ever before. I'm gonna show you how to be number one. All of a sudden, your career, it's gonna make perfect sense. Even if you've never worked in sales or property management before. And for the advanced property manager, I'm gonna show you how to take things to the next level. Leasing University is a new, simple, step-by-step -step process that's effective. We're gonna help you become a rock star in property management. I'm Matt Easton, and this is Leasing University.